Welcome to John Gets Games. This is my end of August variety vlog. As you can see over here on the right, there are a variety of things I'll be discussing, so feel free to jump ahead to anything that particularly interests you or stick around for the whole thing. Uh, so the first thing is just kind of general channel updates. Uh, from a Patreon perspective, that's going really well. I've been doing that for almost two full months now. It's up to $55 a month with, I think, 18 backers, so that's super duper cool. I literally just 10 minutes ago finished filming my second Q&A vlog for uh, most of those backers, so that's very cool. Uh, the second thing, I got sick last week. So you might notice I am a little bit congested still. I'm not sick anymore, but I'm still working through the after effects of that. And the third thing I want to mention has to do with the productivity of the channel for the next two-ish months. And that the fact is I'm going to be getting out less videos than I normally do. I usually shoot to do one video a week, and you may have noticed that in the last a uh, month or so, I only got about two out. I'm getting multiple ones out this week to try and catch up, but looking forward, September is the busiest month of the year for me at my job. I have like 14 or 15 days straight at one point, just lots and lots of work. And then halfway through October, I'm gonna be getting married. So I have a lot of wedding planning and that kind of stuff going on. So I'll definitely be getting out at least one review a month because um, one of those is voted on by my Patreon uh, supporters. And I'll be definitely getting out a question and answer vlog again for the end of September. but. I would expect less videos from me, unfortunately, until pretty much the end of October because of work and weddings, and that's just a reality of my situation. So let's now jump into a game that I'm really excited about, and that would be Codenames. It might sound like I'm jumping on the bandwagon at this point because this game is getting so much press. It was probably the number one game talked about coming out of Gen Con, and uh, man, everybody's excited about this game, it seems like, and I am too. Uh, I've been really interested in this game for many months, actually. The first time I started hearing about it was right before the Gathering of Friends and then a bunch of people played it at the Gathering of Friends and said all these good things and anyway let's talk about the game itself. It's designed by Vlada Schwatel, however you pronounce that, and it's published by Czech Games Edition and Vlada is known for being an incredibly diverse designer. He, he made Mage Knight and Through the Ages which are like multi-hour games and he's got some party games too like Bunny Bunny Moose Moose and Pictomania and he also now has Codenames coming out which is it's a party game ish, but it also definitely has some thinking stuff going on. So the way it works is there's a grid of uh, five by five cards in the middle of a table, and they all just have a word or maybe two on them. And these are the code names of different agents. And this might, it might just say mirror or lamp or baseball or just various vague things. And uh, you split people into teams. It doesn't even need to be even. If you have seven people, then you can have a team of three and a team of four. And then one person on each of those teams is the spy master, and they get to look at a little uh, rubric, a little piece of, a little um, card that tells them which of those 25 uh, code names out there are affiliated with them, which of those are affiliated with the opposing team, and then one of those cards is an assassin, which uh, if anybody looks at the assassin and thinks that the assassin is one of their codename people, then that team immediately loses. And so what this uh, spy master does, these two spy masters, is they give a clue, a one word and one number clue. They might say, um, sofa three, and then their team needs to figure out which of these 25 cards, which three of these 25 cards has anything to do with a sofa in any way, shape, or form. And they, they guess a card, and if it's theirs, then hooray! And if it's not theirs, if it's the opponent's, then they just help the opponents win because the game ends once one team has all of their, um, their secret agents revealed through these clues, or once one team accidentally reveals the assassin that kills the whole team off and then the other team wins. So it looks, it looks really fun, and it's getting great buzz. I have heard almost nothing about bad about it. It seems great because, I mean, for me, I mean, how many times have you been in a situation at a game night where there's seven people, and people just want to play a game all together? Like, everybody wants to play the game at the same time, and most games don't play six, seven, or eight players very well. Uh, in fact, most games that hypothetically play six, seven, or eight players are terrible, but this one looks like it would totally work very easily for 12 people if you wanted to do that kind of thing. So I could see it being played almost every single game night with, you know, maybe the very beginning as people are trickling in because you could be, kind of be like, oh, you know, you came in, we're halfway through the game. Here, you join the red team. Um, or at the end of the night or in the middle, I just, it looks like it's going to get a lot of play. I'm super excited about it. I pre-ordered it at my uh, friendly local gaming store and I can't wait to give it a shot. So now let's switch gears and talk about a game that has disappointed me. And that would be Werfel Bonanza. Um, this is essentially Bonanza the Dice Game. I got it recently, just a couple weeks ago, and I've heard good things about it um, occasionally. It's not a popular game by any means. It was never published in English, so I had it 
I purchased it from the, um, where did I purchase from? The, uh, the Amazon.de uh, store online. And I got a translated version of the rules and I decided to play it. You know, I like Uwe Rosenberg. I quite enjoy Bonanza and I love dice games. I kind of have a dice game thing. I love blank the dice game. So let's try Bonanza the dice game. And I've played it a couple times now, both two players. Uh, so I will, I hope to give it a shot with three or four players at some point. But it really seems like this game just plays itself. The way it works is you roll seven dice and then you must lock at least one of those. And they've got different beans on them and you have a list of recipes of essentially beans that you want to get to. It might be like show two blue beans and one yellow bean or um, show three brown beans or three yellow beans or there's more than just those two colors. But anyway, and what it really feels like ends up happening is you just roll the dice and see if you win or not. The catch of the game and really what made me excited about it and what most people have talked about is that when you roll the dice, if a set lands with those dice faces that matches somebody else's um, recipe that they're looking for, then they get to cash that in. So I was like, oh, cool, it's a dice game where you're rolling dice and you can do things on other players' turns. You want to really pay attention to what they're doing and maybe they're going to change how they roll the dice so that they work around their opponents being able to cash in their different recipes. In reality, the couple times I've played it, it seems like you just roll the dice, lock the dice that are best for you. Occasionally, an opponent will be able to get something, but I haven't really been playing around that and it, and it kind of feels like the person who rolled the dice better wins. And I think that is not very interesting to me. There are decisions to be made because you can cash out of a bean field when it's not completed and kind of bring in a new one. So, and the, the cards actually show you statistical numbers on there, like how likely it is that when you roll seven dice, you will get that recipe like 15% or 23%, which is kind of cool. And you can use that as a decision structure. So it's not a decisionless game, but the decisions are not bolstered enough to make it not feel like you're just rolling the dice and seeing who rolled the best. So anyway, I have been quite disappointed by Werfel Bonanza. I was hoping it would be an awesome filler that could bring anywhere and, hey, Bonanza, hey, dice. Unfortunately, I'm, has not been the case. I hope to try it with three or four players see, to see if it plays any differently, but I'm not terribly confident that it will. Okay, so now it's time for Review Revised, and for this month, I'm going to be covering Super Motherload. Uh, like I did last month, the idea here is that this is a game that I did a full video review for um, many months ago. In this case, I did it back in early May, and I have continued to play it, and I've kind of changed some of my opinions about the game, and I want to give an update to it. So I was very positive about the game, very, very positive in my review, and I am still quite positive about it. I really enjoy the game, I recommend it, but there is one issue that has, that was a neutral issue in my review that has definitely shifted into a negative, and that has to do with the mineral doubler. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about how the game plays. It's a deck builder where you're digging through Mars and you're kind of digging little tunnels on a communal player board. Um, so there is this one ability in the game where you, when you buy a certain people, you can double a mineral on one of your other pilot stacks. So the way you buy your cards, this is a deck building game, is you put money down onto face-up cards and once the money hits a threshold, then you get to buy them, which is really cool because you can work at paying for people over many turns. But if you have an amazing gem on there, then you can duplicate that gem and get really efficient at buying people and getting them into your deck. And I really enjoy that idea uh, when I'm playing the game, and, but the reason it was a neutral issue in my main review is because I was worried that it was looked like a dominant strategy, that if you did not focus your entire gameplay around maximizing this mineral doubler, then you will lose if somebody else does that. And I wasn't sure about it at that point. I've played the game a few more times since then, and this neutral point has definitely become a negative. It really seems like the only thing you should be doing in this game is working around maximizing that mineral doubler. Um, if you do that, then you will do great. If you don't do that, you will do not do well. I've gotten to the point where if I teach this with a new person, especially if I play it like two players, and I know how to maximize the mineral doubler because I've played the game a whole bunch of times, and they don't, and I even tell them, like, try to maximize that mineral doubler, and they kind of do it and they kind of don't. I double their score. It's a humongous part of the game to the point now where I really am thinking about house ruling it. I'm not sure how, but I feel like that mineral doubler needs to get nerfed down. I almost don't want it in the game at all because the other aspects of the game are great. You know, the deck building and the, the mining down and trying to do, trying to match up the sets of the colors of people with the goals and all that stuff. Those are all great, but it seems like in order to do those the most efficiently, you just have to keep hammering that mineral doubler. And 
it's kind of bumming me out. It, it kind of makes me want to, the next time I play the game, and not do the mineral doubler and see how good I do by just kind of avoiding it and then seeing if I can compare it all with somebody who does go down on it. But ultimately, it makes my recommendation of the game a little bit more lukewarm. I still recommend it. It's a really good game. I'm looking forward to the expansion that's going to be coming out in 2016, so that's quite a ways off. But as a fair warning, my... my Review of that once part has soured a bit, and I'm thinking about changing that aspect of the game to just make it less dominant. So let's move on to the last section, which is new games. Uh, these are all the games that I have acquired and put into my collection in the last calendar month. And last month, I had six games for this section. This month, I have 13 which is ridiculous. Now, seven out of these 13 are Kickstarter games that came in that were fulfilled. So I bought them quite a while ago and they're coming in. Um, I just want to mention this because I really am pulling back on the amount of Kickstarters I back because this is just too many. I mean, it's, it's wonderful. It feels like Christmas getting new games like, oh, I forgot I backed that. But seven in one month and then I end up getting six more on through other means, it's just, it's a bit crazy. So anyway, I'm gonna talk about the non-Kickstarter games that I got, and then I'll shift into all the Kickstarter games that have come in this month. All right, so the first game that I got, and these are not in chronological order, is Kashgar. This is a really cool game. It is a German game. It was never published in English, and I bought it from the, uh, the German Amazon, and I got it, I spent like $45, and then I spent another $30 getting English printed cards from a print-on-demand site to put them into the game so I can actually play it because it has a bunch of German. And, oh man, this game is really cool. It's super multiplayer solitaire. It's a really goofy take on um, deck building where you essentially have three face-up decks that you're working through one card at a time. Ah, a really neat game, really cool Euro. I've uh, only played it once so far, but I've really enjoyed it. So anyway, uh, the next game is Patchwork. This come, uh, came out from Uwe Rosenberg last year, and it went super out of print, and I was really bummed. I really wanted it because it's got this kind of puzzly feel where it's two-player only. You're trying to make the best quilt on your player area, and there's essentially two currencies, time and money. The person who is the farthest back on the time track is to take their turn. Really cool game. I've played it a bunch now. I'm really enjoying it, so I might get around to a review of that at some point. The next game is Abluxen, which is also called Linko in English. I happened to buy the German version because, well, once again, I had this German order coming through. So, hey, what the heck, throw that in there. It looks a little cooler than Linko. And this is just a light, simple card game, like over 100 cards, and you're trying to make sets, and you can steal other people's sets, and you're trying to be the first person to get rid of your cards, essentially. You get points for the cards that you have in front of you, so you might not win if you're the first person out, but it's a neat little card game. Uh, next is Werfel Bonanza, which I just talked about in the Disappointed section. It was the last of the three games that I got in that German order. Um, it's disappointed me quite a bit. It's the Bonanza dice game, and I won't go into it any more than I already have. Next up are two different prototype games that are going towards Kickstarter. In fact, this first one called The Networks is already on Kickstarter. It just started, I think, yesterday. And it's a light, cool game about making... Uh, TV network. Uh, you're uh, getting different shows that all have quirky, punny names, and you're putting stars and advertisements on them. It, realistically, it's a card drafting game, but not in the like pass a hand of cards kind of way. More like there's a bunch of cards on the table face up. You have to pick one, and then your turn is over, and then everybody else picks kind of game. It's, it's really neat, uh, and uh, you should check it out. It's on Kickstarter right now. I did a preview for it. I just published that a couple days ago as well. Um, so yeah. Uh, the other game is Nova Nuts, which is a kind of push your luck somewhat engine building game where you're trying to fly around a solar system getting resources and turning them into money and getting crew and modifications um, and you try and do as much of that as you can before the sun explodes uh, so yeah uh, that's it for all of the non Kickstarter games now for the seven games that I've got through Kickstarter the first is Evolution Flight so that's the flight expansion I really enjoyed Evolution I did a, a review for it almost a year ago at this point uh, but I had a couple problems with it, and a really cool thing about this Kickstarter campaign is that they have balanced a bunch of the original game cards, and they essentially sent an entire new deck of cards with rebalances on them. One of the cards, Pack Hunting, which I thought was overpowered, they appear to have corrected, they've reduced the amount of food on all the cards, so I'm just interested in playing the game with these modified 2.0 cards, but then you can also make flying birds and stuff, so that looks like an exciting expansion. I'm, I'm looking forward to giving that one a shot. Next up is Biblios Dice, which is the dice-based version of Biblios the Card Game, which I played once, and I thought was kind of interesting. It was a weird asymmetric game in that the first half of the game plays completely different than the second half of the game, so you're kind of setting up for that second half. Uh, the dice version does not look to be the case. It looks like it's the same kind of game all the way through, but occasionally there's an auction. But for the most part, you're rolling the dice and 
picking one out that makes the most sense for you. It looks neat. I'm looking forward to actually getting a full play of that through. Next up is Deck Building, the Deck Building game, which is a bit of a tongue-in-cheek game. I could not help but buy it. It's a game where you are building a deck, like a patio on outside of your house, but it also uses some deck building mechanisms in there. Uh, it's a two-player game. I've played it once. I had more fun playing it than I honestly expected to. It was a bit of a, ah, it was really cheap and I got it because it seems silly, but hey, maybe there's actually a game in there. Uh, the next game after that kind of came in the same Kickstarter package is Unpub, the unpublished card game. This is a party game about trying to pitch unpublished games where you're mishmashing different mechanics together and trying to sell a game kind of on the fly. I haven't had an opportunity to play this yet, but I think that one could be fun. Next up, we have Adorable Pandering, which much like the last two games I talked about, I mostly got because it looked funny and it was super cheap on Kickstarter. I don't know if it's actually going to be a good game. It's about trying to play pandas when they're most adorable and you get points for that. But which pandas are adorable changes throughout the game. It looks very light. It looks silly. I, I look forward to actually giving it a shot, man. I, I hope it's good. So now the second to last Kickstarter game that I got is World of Smog Honor Majesty's Service, which is this huge box with miniatures in it and this big board that has gears that actually move on it. The gears don't touch each other like Zulkin, but you put your pieces around and you're kind of going around. It's got... It's got some neat ideas where you're trying to buy ethers low and then sell them high to get money to acquire these kind of metaphysical artifacts and be the first person to get out with all those things. So it's kind of whoever is most efficient wins. It's got a whole bunch of mechanisms going on in there. I've played one full game solo with myself and I was not terribly impressed with it. So I'm, I'm curious to see if I, uh, what I think about that game once I get a full game in with other people. Uh, so now for the last game is Tumbling Dice, which is also a Kickstarter game, and this one's really simple. It's got a big wooden board, and you just flick dice from the top of it. They fall down. You all do this. You knock each other's dice around, and you get points for how the dice land. It looks silly. I've played it a bunch of times now, and I've had an okay time with it. I was hoping it would be a little bit more interesting than feeling kind of totally random, but I'll keep bringing it out at uh, game days because it just you just sit down and flick some dice around. It's a great way to kill time between games. So that wraps it up. If you'd like to see more vlogs like this, I do one every single month, as well as in-depth board game reviews and playthroughs and all that kind of stuff, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you'd like to be more involved with the channel, you can directly support it at patreon.com slash johngetsgames, and you'll get to see um, those Q&A vlogs that I do, and you can vote on one of the games I review each month. It's pretty cool. Anyway, thanks for watching.